I'm going to ask you a lot about the, the esoteric part too, because there is a lot of shamanic things in your art. <laughs> um, so the next question is, what percentage of esotericism you think your songs have and where all this spirituality on your work comes from? Um, I feel like all the songs will get pretty esoteric, I guess, N not intentionally, but I feel like when I'm making music, it's like such an out of body experience, right? And you're just kind of, I don't know, sometimes I feel like I'm channeling like from down below and up above. So I, I think it just naturally comes in, but I think that comes into everything I do in every aspect of life. And I've always been like this. I've always been. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an esoteric person, so. But you've been raised with uh, esoteric people or friends, or it was all a personal uh, way to live, or you find all these uh, es esoteric things uh, by yourself, by curiosity, how it was the, the process? That's a good question. Um, I feel like my parents both have kind of a spiritual element, but not quite as much to the extent that I do. Like I took it very far. Um, I don't know, it just started very young. Like for instance, when I was 13, my friend had an astrology book and we both got super into astrology. And then at 17, I got super into tarot, but I also used to cut school and go to the library and kind of read about alternative not alternative religions like religions in the middle east and right yeah but i wasn't raised religious so i don't feel like i have that as kind of a framework that i'm rebelling against or that's even in right my, you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i have my personal trip too when i was 20 years uh about sand meditation and it was like really cool really difficult and But it, it was something personal, and uh, but it was it was fine for six years. It was fine. Uh, yeah, uh, but I, I understand that it's a, a personal process. Um, so, but when you uh, think you you feel that you uh, how do you say um, when you produce music uh, because you're a producer too, right? Uh, you you do all your own music too. Um, you're not uh, thinking about i'm going to write about this uh, this is going to be uh, blah uh, for example in your lyrics you name a lot uh, of elements like uh, storms soul uh, like uh, rain uh, well all this kind of tough stuff, stuff. Uh, so i was like thinking uh, w which is her element uh, what's the element right oh in astrology i'm triple air Oh, okay. That's What's intense. <laughs> Mine is fire and earth. I'm not okay. sure if it is. Uh, yeah, fire, fire, air. So that's a good combo. I think. I guess. <laughs> I would rather be fire. <laughs> it is what it is. But uh, as an artist, you have a a very strong element. So, um, okay. So next question. Uh, what do you do as a living and do you consider yourself a world wanderer because I always watch your Instagram and you're always travel traveling uh, what do I do for a living I do different stuff um, I do a lot of different kinds of therapeutic stuff that's actually honestly how I've been making most of my money I do modeling Sometimes I do sometimes more like erotic modeling or sometimes someone hires me to be in their video. I don't know. I do a lot of things Great. Uh, to kind of support what I, my music, but I'm hoping that that shifts, you know? 
it will it will yeah. i know it will um well and uh, you're constantly traveling because of work or because you you like or uh, you can be in sometimes in one place uh what do you do you like about traveling so even astrologically i have the chart of like the ultimate nomad so i'm basically cursed <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel sometimes I seek travel and sometimes travel seeks me. Like sometimes I will get a job and it requires me to travel. Mm. Or I kind of realized during the pandemic that I could go to the US and do different hustles for money and then take that money and stretch it a bit. Like I work really hard there and I stretch it somewhere else. Um, so that kind of requires me to travel because I don't want to live in the US. Um, But also some, I don't know, it's hard for me to stay in one place for very long. Right. So I need change. I feel like the change helps keep my energy flowing and right. the art going. <laughs> so. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's totally your air element too. The, Probably. Right. And and how did that, how this influence in your music? Because I think that uh, uh, staying in one place, even about vibrations or sounds, Uh, I know that influence a lot of on music too. So, uh, do you feel or believe that every time that you travel, you need to compose something different or something new, or it's the same honor that it's always evolving? Just that. I kind of know. I was just talking to someone about this today because I was telling him how during the pandemic I was kind of composing an album, and now I don't really relate to the older material. I think partially because I grew. But I was talking to him how often in an album, they want like a coherent theme, especially if you're part of a label. Um, and it's tricky because the whole time I was making it, I was in different places of the world. So sometimes I notice it's always going to be me, but then maybe like I have one song now where I was in Greece and I added some kind of Spanish guitar to the mix. Uh, okay, it's not Greece, but it had like a Mediterranean flavor that just wanted to come through. So I do see sometimes how subconsciously that energy will trickle into the song, you know? Right. You let it flow. So, and, and you find your elements, right? Because uh, as I read on your uh, bio, uh, you, you collect uh, things, elements and instruments from around the world. I, I guess it's, it's that you record, for example, you told me Uh, uh, that about the his guitars uh, so you you try to do that uh, every time that you travel or it's just something that happens well that that bio is a little outdated because at the time yeah. i was more i was more put i mean when i first started making music a while back i was just using iMovie to make music and i was literally traveling and whatever instrument was around i would do really diy recordings right then when i was in berlin i was super into collecting like instruments from different parts of the world but now i feel more it's like since i've really been traveling kind of condensed on my laptop and if i meet someone like during the pandemic my neighbor is a violin player then i try to oh. pull him but yeah <laughs> yeah there is a lot of cool element uh arrangements in your music too. I, I heard some, uh, I don't know if it were some cellos or uh, or some bass uh, chords, but there is a lot of uh, data or information in your music. I love that. Yeah, uh, too it, much. <laughs> maybe too much, but it's like every time I hear it, I find, find something new. So that makes it like really interesting. So, um, okay. So uh, next question. It's about dancing because Onat Sar, it's a great dancer. I don't know how you dance and sing at the same time. I I, I can't even think about it. But, it's uh, very tricky. You know, it's yeah. very tricky. The other day I was in a recording studio here in Mexico City and I was talking to this audio engineer and he was super pretentious. And I was telling him how it's really tricky to do this live performance, like breathing. And when you're doing very subtle vocals, Um, sorry, I won't go too long. But he was like, oh, I jump on stage and play the guitar and sing all the time. And I was like, no, that's so different than doing like a live recording and having to like really finesse every detail while you're breathing from your stomach while you're singing and dancing. Right. It's tricky. Right. Yeah, it's very difficult. 
And, and do you think about the per performance, the live performance when you are uh, making your music? Or? No, that, that particular song that I just released recently, um, I was going to use a different song and then I was like, ah, oh, fuck it, I hate it. And then I made this one last minute. And so that one I kind of made with the intention of this live performance we were going to do. Mm. But I do kind of, I don't know, I feel like composing for live is so different than for an album. And I kind of wish sometimes that I were composing for live because I feel it's a bit more free. Right. <laughs> I, I watch uh, the video that you are making like a li live performance uh, on YouTube. Um, and it was really cool. Uh, I don't know if you were using all the the layers that you use in your general songs, but it sounds like really cool. It have a really cool sound. Um, okay. Great. Um, so, where did you learn to dance? Uh, how to dance? Um, I mean, when I was like 17 years old, I started doing belly dance. Belly, not ballet. <laughs> <laughs> belly dance. Okay, I get it. I won't, I, mean, say, I won't say Shakira, so don't... <laughs> I mean, Shakira's good at what she does, right? Right. Uh, I think when I was younger, maybe I was sometimes doing like hip hop classes with people randomly, but hmm. I got super into belly dance and I just became... Uh, when I get into something, I become obsessive, so I went to every single place every day. <laughs> and then I got bored because I was like, okay, I hit my plateau with it. And since then, honestly, I just, I don't know, learn things over time or I became more into street dance maybe once in a while I'll go to a class but usually it's more through like osmosis you know this word yes yes that, that when, kind of... when you okay yes I get it yeah. uh, but <clears throat> I, I watched on your video said when you dance you I didn't know that you learn uh, belly dance but it's like you mix the urban style with uh, with like this kind of uh, Middle East thing that I actually hear in your music, so it's really cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got super into urban styles, and I don't know. I wish I were a bit more disciplined, but I really like like hip hop styles, and I like voguing and all these <laughs> urban styles. So right, mixing in your own way, right? <laughs> yeah, and you you really do it. So um, okay, so um, and. Can you talk about how you feel in the Berlin scene? Uh, and can you recommend other cool places that you visit to go and check the music scene? The music scene in Berlin, I find is a bit tricky because there's music everywhere. And mm. everyone is a musician. But sometimes I find it hard to find what I want. I mean, I find that anywhere to be honest, but Berlin, it's like very techno. Right. and a lot of DJing and now I'm starting to appreciate it more but for a while I was super jaded just because it's so it's everywhere and it's too much and then you find I don't know different kinds of bands that I'm not I don't know how to explain it um I feel like honestly if someone were to go there as a musician the way that usually you're going to do best and get the most show up is if you are doing techno or <laughs> club stuff. Right. That is the Berlin scene. And there's a music scene beyond that, but it's, you know, it's spotty and unpredictable. And um, did that answer your question? No, yeah, I, I have a lot of friends that been there and they told me the same. So um, I know that uh, maybe uh, uh, the Berlin guys are more like, Um, cool about the to listening uh, new kinds of, of music styles, but yeah, techno is uh, the most uh, the most uh, how do you say? Well, the, the music they prefer. So I, I used to produce uh, dark techno music, but to me it was more strong to to produce something more pop or something like that. So, um, but I don't don't know why I have more I reach more people with, with what I do. At Berlin, I don't know. Uh, it's something, oh, really? uh, right? And and of course, in my country, in Argentina, uh, there are really cool musicians. But uh, um, you have to go to these very underground places to, to play music. And uh, but it's like I guess in like everywhere. I don't know. 
Um, there's one musician from Argentina I just discovered recently who lives in Berlin, Catnap, you know her? Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. really cool. Uh, yeah, I really like this. For me, it's this is a little more interesting when people are kind of pulling elements from electronic and techno, but they still have kind of a song that's like a song and it's right. a performance. So I appreciate this because she's kind of like pulling different elements, but also she's still a performer creating a song, right. not just like a 30 minute set, you know? Right. Yes, I I read, uh, read in an interview that she was struggling with this thing with the, the German producers that they told her at 16 bars, you're going to make this. And she was saying like, no, I want to do a, uh, a regular song or have a more pop style. So. So yeah, she's very cool. Um, so the next one, um, about your voice and your lyrics. Um, your voice have a very particular sound. It have a lot of colors. And sometimes, I don't know if you're a soprano or a mezzo. Uh, your vocal range is sometimes very high and other times it's extremely low or guttural. Uh, sometimes you sound like Beth Gibbon from Portishead, uh, sometimes like Royce Murphy from Moloko, and sometimes like Alison Goldfrapp from Goldfrapp. Uh, but of course you maintain your own voice style. Um, so my question is about when do you learn to sing and where do you think uh, all your style comes from? Okay, so to be honest, even from my last EP because I feel like in my last EP I maybe used like four different voices in my opinion <clears throat> and now I feel like even my voice has kind of shifted a bit, a bit since then and I'm doing a bit higher a bit like more R&B-ish maybe hmm. um, so maybe to someone I sound all the same all the time but I think just like the slightest way that you move your mouth and the way that the breath flow grows hmm. grows you can change your voice so drastically. So there's like many voices I can actually play around with. Now I'm kind of like using a couple that are even kind of different from the last EP. But I would say like when I feel really at home, it's like this kind of guttural bluesy power mm -hmm. vocals. That's like when I feel it, cause that's in my twenties how I was kind of singing. I just don't use that voice that much anymore because I feel like in music it's so particular and it's so almost dramatic that it doesn't always fit, you know, it's like such a mood. Right. So I don't know where that voice came from, really. I don't know because a lot of people think like, oh, you're trying to sing like blues or something. Like, no, it just happened in my early 20s when I started singing with an acoustic guitar, it just came. And when, I, when I'm singing like that, I don't know how to explain it, but I feel like a, almost like a past life thing. Like I Whoa. feel sometimes like this isn't me, this is like a woman that's probably not even white from like a past life and it's very intense emotionally. When that's start from Mississippi, right? From Mississippi. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm gonna get into trouble. <laughs> well, it could be, we don't know, so, uh, but. Uh, it's, like sometimes I even start, I cry a lot when I'm singing. I don't know why I'm crying. It's just like such an emotional process, <laughs> but uh, it's well, like... While you're, you're both compo sorry, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, while I'm composing or mm. like laying down vocals or if I'm like really into it, I just start crying, but it's not like a crying like, oh, I'm in pain. It's like so beyond, it's so bigger than me, you know? Mm. It's like this huge emotional well in the world right. <laughs> or from a past life, I don't know. Yeah, it, It's ther therapeutic, literally. It's, it's like, yeah. Uh, I used to, I tried to learn uh, for to be like a ly lyric singer, uh, but I, it was like so emotional. I, I have to leave it, uh, the, the career. It was like, <laughs> every time I go, it, it was like, <laughs> almost crying and it was I should be right. able to Why like, do that? I don't know <laughs> <laughs> right and and also the teacher like uh saying to me you're, you're not singing well when I was like crying so fuck you <laughs> so, um, so but but you uh, uh how do you say uh in your house or in your life or with your friends uh, you you listen blues music or jazz music or 
do you think uh, it was like something that happens uh, just because? I mean, I think first and foremost it just happened. I don't know. I don't know where it came from. It's beyond my comprehension. For sure, I used to listen to more blues when I was younger. Sometimes listen to jazz. I don't know. I really don't know where it came from. <laughs> I can't give you an answer. I don't and, know. Uh, but you learned by yourself or with, with a teacher? Yeah, I don't think... I mean, it's interesting when people say, where do you learn how to sing? Because I feel like it's such a just a thing that's in you, like an intuitive thing. I think in the past couple of years, I started to be like, oh, I don't like my voice or I'm tired of singing like this. So I started to kind of consciously try and play around with different ways to sing. But I think inherently it was always just an intuitive thing. That, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's talent. So, yeah, great. Um, and, okay, so, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so, in your lyrics, um, you about uh, this uh, esoteric thing that we talked before. Um, you uh, talk about yourself uh, uh, or as a persona that you have with your artist uh, uh, project. In all my lyrics, am I talking about myself or? Yes. Do you hide it with poetry or is it just <laughs> something that comes uh, uh, just naturally? Just Um, sometimes it is about myself. Maybe I, I do refer to myself sometimes. Sometimes it's using an alter ego. Sometimes I talk about more universal things though. I don't plan though, like this is what the song is going to be about, you know? Mm -hmm. I kind of let it tell me what it's going to be about and then just flow from there. And I really don't put that much effort into my lyrics. <laughs> so... <laughs> It's okay. more like a subconscious stream of consciousness, whatever wants to kind of go, you know? Sometimes it's about freedom and oppression. Sometimes it's about the need to go within and listen to your internal voice in order to actually hear. Sometimes it's about the power of the desert. I don't know what will come, you know? <laughs> But do you, do you have this like image of the desert or... Uh... For the Desert Thunder song, I actually, it was very, sometimes my music is very visually inspired. So I had very clear imagery of like the desert and like an old prophet in the desert and like a, a heart meter. I don't know, there were all these visual things. So I was trying to translate that into sound. So sometimes it does happen that it's more like I'm a visual artist trying to paint with sound. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, that, that's something that is really interesting about your work. And for example, when you use the synthetizers, synthetizers uh, I love when you use these like sublows or I, I was like really curious about, is she thinking about uh, another element or I'm just crazy? Uh, uh, so it, 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 I don't know if you are like conscious, but I think that you are always channeling emotions and maybe you don't know what you're doing, but it's amazing. Um, I love like, and to be honest, I, I'm like, why is my music kind of going high? I mean, that's probably the Aries shit, but I'm like always wanting to do like lower frequency stuff because I love, I mean, it is an energetic part of the body and, and life, right? And sometimes I'm like, oh, it's like a jungle and the, Uh, like a cat in the jungle or maybe this is like more sexual like for me lower frequencies are more sexual you know there's right they do have energy right <laughs> do you like barry white <laughs> barry white yeah, I, i i was kidding because of the low frequencies but uh... the, the next two questions uh first what do you think about the what is going on today with music and about uh, the commercial music <laughs> uh, do you like it? Do you hate it? Uh, there are things, things that you like or... Um, I, to be honest, like when I'm in a store and you know they play like the ultimate pop music, I'm not a big fan. It's like a little bit over the top and obnoxious for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I do feel like maybe in a slightly more niche alternative but slightly poppy, like there are some little pockets that I'm like, okay, okay. 
or you know like i for a long time i hated trap and now i use trap in my music i like this but maybe right. like super mainstream pop um i feel like we've regressed a bit no right <laughs> yeah i feel the same and <laughs> and no no words about reggaeton i'm not going to talk about that so uh Well, I have things to say about that, but... <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. It's your interview, so we would love no, to hear I, that. I noticed that I have a lot of friends from Latin America, you mm -hmm. know, and and most of them are musicians and all of them are like oh, reggaeton, <laughs> um, like a little pretentious about it or like my drummer friends are like the beat. To be honest, I kind of like reggaeton because it's really good for dancing with your hips. Right. And I like this kind of like, you know, so I, I like reggaeton. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, no comments now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but it's okay. Uh, you're a dancer, so you're forgiven. Yeah, I feel like most of the people that I know that don't like reggaeton are, are guys that are not dancing, you know, so... <laughs> I like <laughs> to dance. <laughs> I don't like to reggaeton. But like with your hips, you know? I right. don't know. It's good for that. Well, yeah. Belly dance too, but I don't... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, well, that's that's fine. And um, yeah, <laughs> I I think the next we we know which kind of music is going to be your next album so, yeah, on a reggaeton. I do like I really like deconstructing things in music. So it's like I will use pull from any genre if I want to, but then like make a thing out of it. So there are times where I'm like hmm, maybe I should use a reggaeton beat, but obviously the way Why that not? I'm gonna, it's not like. It's not going to sound like a reggaeton song, you know right. what I mean? Like the actual beat, why not? <laughs> you never know. So, um, uh, well, the other day I was um, watching like all the people that I follow on Instagram. Uh, it was Mother's Day in, in North America, in U USA. And you post uh, a picture of your mother, Jennifer Sarr, and And so I, I looked at the picture and I thought it was like really cool. So I entered to her Instagram and I watched that she's a really amazing photographer and she worked with a lot of artists too, uh, like uh, Ozzy Osbourne and Bruce Big Sting and I don't know if many others. So I said like, well, she, she obviously uh, have like all this art art information uh, when she was like really young yeah um so uh do you do you feel that you made yourself uh as you told me before like with these esoteric things that you go this way you're curious and how you feel and but do you think that uh and there is any other factor that maybe nurture you uh, with the with the art or or this scene to you it was normal to to live uh, surrounded by art or you have to search it for search for it no i'm not one of those people like i noticed that a lot of artists when i watch interviews they say i came from a really small town and i had a <laughs> christian parents right. and so like i'm really rebelling but that's not my situation at all. I was surrounded by artists in New York City. I went to kind of a hippie school where like, I feel they looked at the individual person. So they knew I'm not going to be a mathematician. So they tried to encourage music and other things. So I can't say I don't have some tale of rebelling. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It was definitely around me always, yeah. Great. Well, that's awesome. Uh... It's really awesome. Uh, in my case, I, I was surrounded by a, a lot of like folk music from here. So, uh, but it was cool because I learned a lot from that. Uh, but there, it wasn't hippies but, or anything or artists, not at all. But I wasn't rebelling, I, I guess, I, I think. Um, so uh, the final question is, uh, how do you see uh, or you feel that your music is going to be in three years how it's how do you how would you like to be the revolution or or be working with someone or any special artist 
any reggaeton artist. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like as far as the the style of music or where do I see myself as far as like what I'm doing in my life or a career? Do you mean actually more the literal production aspect or? Right, yes. About, um, for example, which would be like your, um, how do you say, your dream album working with, with uh, which artists or about the concept art? You know, it's so tricky because I, I don't know, first off it shifts at different times and, and second off I feel sometimes I really like aspects of people's work and really respect them, but then when I actually, and a part of me is like, oh, I wish I could make music like that, but then when I actually try to do it, I'm like, no, but that's not quite me, you know, so it's not like there's, I don't know how to answer this question, fuck. Um, I got her. I got her. Um, I mean, sometimes when I hear Sub Delise's music, I feel there's like a big similarity, and I, I like her producer. Uh, I really respect FK Twigs. I like. I started getting into Sega Bodega recently because I feel like he has this kind of. You know him? No. Which which artist? I know IK Twigs, but Sega Bodega. No. To be honest, I only know a few songs, but it's more like, and here's the thing sometimes when I listen to music, it's like, would I necessarily listen to all his music or do I like all of it? I don't know, but sometimes when I listen to music, it's more like I can hear um, the way their brain works and it's interesting to me, or yeah. like the way that he approaches production, there's something there to learn or that I find interesting or that I relate to. But it doesn't necessarily mean we're making exactly the same kind of music. I think sometimes I just like people maybe that are putting their own unique kind of stamp or have an interesting approach to production. Mm. But then if I think like, well, I, for sure I would collaborate with them, but it would be maybe like two different worlds, even though it's not, I don't know. <laughs> this is a hard question. Yeah, the, no, it's, it's cool. Uh, yes, it's always about the this kind of mixing styles. Uh, I really feel part of it too in other yeah. styles, right? But, uh, yeah, that's, well, and um, one last thing. Uh, can you send a message to the young artist? Um, just, okay, that's it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, let me think about this. Mm. Great, take your time. Um, well, I don't know. I feel like there's different things that I would say because I feel like one, I notice a lot of people just in general want to get into production and electronic music and they have this kind of pipe dream but they don't do it because they get overwhelmed by what gear to have or mm. production seems so intimidating right and mm. I was stuck in that loop for years and I think it's first and foremost like unrealistic to just expect that you're going to be a producer and know everything right off the bat so literally start with I don't know garage band or arranging samples or a loop pedal just like find one simple thing and then it will kind of propel itself from there but you have to do it you have to do it and you have to experiment and then it will start to become more clear what your avenue is over time i see this a lot with a lot of people i know like they have the pipe dream but they don't know where to start and it's intimidating and I didn't start like, oh, I know how to use Logic Pro and all these plugins, you know? It was like a gradual process that came from obsession, so. <laughs> right, sure, yeah. Yeah, it's it's like, yeah, they, it's like a big monster uh, for many yeah. people. And many other frustrated people say, it, even to this uh, new, new guys, that they need to learn more and, and they are not encouraging them or, supporting them to just keep on doing it. So it's a nice message. I want to say two more things. <laughs> yeah, sure. Please, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I feel like the other thing is I've noticed that a lot of the music that I like or, or I hear little things that I want to do are fairly niche. So I haven't been able to just Google it or YouTube it. Like, how do I do this? Mm -hmm. So 
I tend to learn a lot through really listening to and analyzing music or if I notice, hey, the snare is like that or something. And then I just try literally to experiment and find, you know, it's like really listening, actively listening and trying to learn and trying to explore how you can do that. And the other thing is I feel like everyone should always be authentic to their voice because otherwise what's the point? You're not offering anything in my opinion. <laughs> right. You know? Like we have enough commodity. So mm. yeah. Yeah, it's it's like something really uh, human and personal. Uh, uh, that's really cool. I I, can, I am thinking about the video. Uh, and the other message? Oh, those were, I just said two. two? <laughs> those oh. were a three for now, so. Okay, um, great. So, <clears throat> well, Ona, I really enjoyed the interview. Uh, thank you a lot. And um, I would love to talk about three hours and doing questions, but I know that you have to do your stuff. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, so this was Ona Tsar, uh, interview for Elo Sound Design Community. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, don't forget to listen to Ona's uh, music. I will leave the links uh, somewhere here. Uh, and so, Ona, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Buenas noches. Vos también. Awesome. Un saludo. Chao. Chao, chao.